Hi everyone, welcome to Flip It and Restore It if you're new or welcome back if you have been here before. This channel is all about furniture flipping, furniture painting, furniture upcycling, all the good things. Um, today we are going to be restoring this rather sad looking G-Plan Labrenza coffee table. You can see it's quite dinged up, um, the brass is quite pitted as well so we're going to need to address that. And then on the surface, there are these uh, flecks of white paint that are stuck in the grain. So I, I'm not sure if it's been painted before and they've sanded it down and they've just not been able to get the paint out. But lucky for us, that's a job we're going to have to do today. Um, see a close up there of all that white paint. So we're going to fully restore this repaint the base black, restore the top, get that brass looking shiny and new. You can see just how pitted it is there and all the scratches and dings on the legs. And here you can see the Egom G Plan sticker which is a mark of it being an original piece. Here I'm just going in with some grime cutter just to give it a really good clean before we start working on it. Both the top and the bottom. I'm gonna give that a good clean down. You can already see how dirty that water is getting, which is exactly why you should clean a piece before you start working on it. Otherwise, all that dirt is gonna get trapped inside your finish. Right, and on to sanding. Starting here with the 60 grit. I went in with quite a rough sandpaper knowing that I had to get out all of that white paint but even using 60 grit because the grains quite pronounced I couldn't even get a lot of it out so you'll see further on in the video I actually have to go in with a toothpick and pick out what paint is left now the surface of this particular coffee table the Labrenza is an African mahogany called Tola so um, luckily I didn't have to worry about any veneer and blowing through the veneer so I could go in pretty hard with that sandpaper good old Dyson clearing away the mess here I'm just taping off all the brass ends um, and along the base because I'm going to be painting the the legs and the base black so I just don't want to get any of that paint onto the wood this masking tape is the worst paper the worst it just ripped as you were trying to unstick it and like it went straight in the bin after this project taking the feet off Stu's gonna take those feet to work and he's gonna run those through his lynching wheel and you'll see how beautifully they come up. So going in with the 120 grit sandpaper, just giving it a good old scuff sand. This black paint was awful. It got everywhere and it was staining my hands. It, it really wasn't that nice. You can see it looks like I work in the coal mines or something. Going in with a mist bottle of water, just to give it a spray and a wipe away all that dust from sanding so just wiping away all of that dust before I start painting it making sure I have a clean surface to paint so I'm using the Dixie Belle caviar 
to paint the base black. Just mixing it up really well here. And using the two inch mini brush to apply it. Just doing sort of thin coats. I think I did two coats in total but just keeping them nice and thin. You can already see what a difference that fresh coat of paint has made. Oh, it really looks so much better. In between coats I used a 400 grit sandpaper, just to lightly sand and smooth off the finish before applying the next layer. And then taking my Mr. Bottle with water again and just wiping down, getting rid of all that dust. Ready for the second coat of Dixie Belle. Going in with another thin coat of the Dixie Belle Caviar. Um, and then with this coat, I use my uh, Mr. Bottle with water just to whip the brush, just to keep that uh, paint smooth and loose, just to try and avoid brush marks as much as possible. You can't eliminate them entirely, but it is to try and get as smooth a finish as possible. Right, for top coat, I went in with the Dixie Belle Clear Coat and I just mixed in a bit of that caviar and then I, again I applied that in thin layers and the reason I mixed in the caviar with the top coat is just that when it dries it doesn't have that sort of hazy look to it so you're, you're just tinting your top coat by adding a bit of the paint to the top coat just applying that in thin strokes and then trying not to work it too much once I've applied it. Now once I'd finished sanding the top, I thought it looked just a little dull. So I had this tester pot of teak stain, which I wanted to apply and see if it would richen up the wood at all. So I'm just applying a thin layer of it all over the top of the table. Um, and it dries off pretty quickly. You can see it is adding a bit of the richness back in the wood. Thank you. 
but it's not it's not making a massive difference And here I am with that glorious toothpick picking out flakes of paint. I must have spent at least half an hour leaning over this table picking out flakes of paint. Well worth it in the end, but man oh man, what a pain it was whilst I was doing it. using some Osmo Pollux oil now to add um, some protection to the top. I love this stuff. It just makes such a difference on your wood furniture. I used this on our other G Plan coffee table. We did the Astro coffee table and it, it just is night and day when you use it. And you'll see here as I'm rolling on what a massive difference it makes. I mean, just, oh, it's just glorious. So I did a couple of coats of the Osmo oil um, and sanded with the 400 grit in between. And then once those two coats had dried, I went in with the Rust-Oleum Furniture Wax and applied some wax to the black base. We have sealed it with the top coat, but I do want to go in with some wax just to give it some extra durability and then buff that wax out just for that nice sheen that you get. Going in and buffing it out. And you can see as I'm buffing it out, you can see that sheen start to appear. It's just a really nice finish on, on furniture. this Howard Feed and Wax. I love the smell of this. I think it's orange scented. Oh, it smells amazing. So I'm just going in with some of that over the top. I do love me some wax. for waxing the top again using that rust-oleum furniture wax and just applying it liberally all on the surface and rubbing that in well and then that leaving that to dry for 20 minutes So once that it set, I came back in and just buffed it out. And again, you can see that sheen as you sort of buff it out. Again, with the Howard Feed and Wax. And the smell, like I said, the smell is amazing. Giving everything another buff. And 
now these are the feet. Let's do it buffed and polished back to practically brand new. I'm just putting those back in and you can just see how shiny and amazing they look. And I love that we could keep the original hard way. So a reminder of the sad state it was in before. And now, how it looks after we've refinished it. Oh, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, and we sold this last week and dropped it off at its new home on Saturday. It was about an hour and 20 drive to get there. But it has found its new home, not surprisingly. It is such a, such a beautiful table. These were the shots that we used for our listing. Some of the photos. You can see just how nice it's turned out now that it's been refinished. And thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe, share with family and friends. We'd appreciate all the support we can get as a new channel. And um, hopefully see you at the next video. Bye.